Hello, my fellow junkers. This is Kathy, and thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today, it'll probably take a couple of videos, but I'm going to show you how to make a paper bag journal. Um, the whole thing is made out of paper bags, and... I finally found one, I've tried a lot, and I found some that I like to make. Um, I love paper bag journals. This is the one we're going to make. It's, um, this hasn't been decorated yet. So let me show you what it is. Simply cloth on the edge. This is a kind of faux look leather a technique I learned on a fellow YouTuber's channel. And then it's just paper bags. I have not decorated it yet, so as I said, but I do wanna show you one, some that I have. I did not make these, but it's the same technique. This is my personal, one of my personal paper bag journals and I just love it. Um, the reason I love paper bag journals is you can fit so much stuff into your paper bag journals. Um, as you can see. This is a crazy one. But they're a lot of fun. I have this one. This was made, actually, the base was made by Hoot Nannies. Um, she used to have an Etsy shop. I don't believe she has one that makes these anymore. Here's another one she made for me. And it's the same technique as well that we'll be learning today. But lots of room for everything. And when I add additional pages into it, I simply um, glue them in kind of like a flap. Very easy that way. This still has a ways to go to be filled up, but I love it. Kind of a catch-all for everything. Okay, let's get started. First of all, the bags that I'm using, I bought these at Hobby Lobby, and they are eight by eight by ten bag, uh, inch bags. You buy them. These came in a pack of twelve, and they were six ninety nine. Unless you can get them on sale, I know Hobby Lobby no longer has the 40% off coupon. But you can also use, uh, if your grocery stores have plain paper bags, I like these because they were the right size for my journal that I wanted to make without having to do so much cutting, etc. Okay, the first thing you need to do is take your bag apart. I don't use, I made uh, paper bag journals that actually you use the paper bag as pockets and such. I don't do that. At least not yet. I haven't. And I'm going to open it all the way up. Next thing we do is take these off. There are some, there is a YouTuber that, you know, shows you how to make the bags uh, with the handles. They're kind of fun. Okay. And on this particular, because my journal is going to end up being size eight by around six and a half. You take your journal, your paper bag, if you're using the same one, and you fold it so that your folded edges come together. So you're folding it lengthwise. 
So your closed folded edges are coming together and you can crease that really well. Then the nice thing about these bags, you have a ready-made cutting line. This is where I'm going to cut for my journal, right here. You can save this for later for pockets. And then what you end up with is something that looks like this. You have two folded edges here that are separate, and then you have a folded edge here. On that folded edge, you want to trim off, oh, about a sixteenth of an inch. And all I'm doing actually is opening up the folds, just like that. So that from each paper bag, I'm going to get two full pages. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with water. Now, I've already um, gotten my paper prepped. It's important to prep your paper because when you do that, your paper bag pages become very flexible and supple. So when I did it, I used a roasting pan full of water and just put all my pages in at once. And then what you need to do be generous with your water is you crumple it up. You can even add some more water when you're doing that. And this is really the tedious portion of this. And this just gets it a little more supple and also gives it some nice wrinkles. just like this. And then what I do is I use my Cricut Easy Press to press all my other sheets. But with this one sheet I'll show you, I'm just going to use a, excuse me, a, an iron, my mini iron, and just iron it out to dry it. When I did them all in the roasting pan, I used my Cricut Easy Press at 360 degrees, and then I could uh, dry them much faster and smooth them out a little bit. And while I'm here, I may as well fold it in half, just like that and iron the crease down. Just like that. And dry up my spot here. And I'm gonna put this aside and pretend that I've already put it into my stack and I'm going to, without a cover or anything, I'm going to poke my holes for sewing my signature together. Now on this, you don't have to be really particular about your holes because you're not going to be sewing this into a binding. I'll show you what we're going to do. So I'm gonna use three holes. I came down about three quarters of an inch from the top. And I tell you, after you soak the newspaper, the, the bags, they're not easy to work with because it makes them strong, although flexible. Okay. And in each one, in the first one I did, I actually used six bags in one and six in another. So you got from each bag, I got four papers. So this is quite large. 
I didn't want the one I'm making now to be quite so big because once I fill this up, it's going to be extremely chunky and I didn't want it quite so chunky. So let me sew this together quickly. I already have my thread going down through the bottom. up through the top, down through the back, the bottom. There we go. And back up through the center. Okay, let's get that nice and tight. And tie that in a double knot. Okay, chop that off, get rid of the clips. And I'll show you what's next. Next is our cover. So I'm taking another bag. I need to make it a little wider. Let me take this off. And we have some things to do to it before we um, before we make it into a cover. And on this one, I am going to, I can still fold it here. Cut it on the same original line. Now in this one, I am going to cut it here. And then let me measure. Here was a paper that we did not use. And it's not bad to use this back as it allows a little more support. I'm gonna stick this in here. Give it some room. And I'm going to give it up until this line. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna crumple this up. Well, I'm gonna wet it first. Same thing we did for the other. I'm not gonna wet this too much. This time I want the wrinkles to be very prominent. You'll notice when I did this, then I'm we're going to ink it so that the wrinkles really show. And we're gonna open it up. And the nice thing is if you don't have wrinkles in places that you want wrinkles, you can just wrinkle it up some more. And you're still not worrying about the size yet. As long as you know that it's wider than the pieces you originally cut out. Next, what I'm going to do is 
going to make this the inside. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to add some ink to where the wrinkles are. And I want to give it that kind of used feeling. I'm going to use some vintage photo. And I'm not going to press hard. I'm simply rubbing this over the side. I mean the top. Making sure I, you know, get as much on the wrinkles as I can. That gave it just a light coat. Now, I'm gonna use a little darker. I'm gonna use the walnut stain. Oops. Just like that. Yeah. Now I, you know, when you see old stuff, it's got lots of different colors in it. So I'm going to add some dark, dark, dark green. I'm not gonna add it all over. And let's try some of this mahogany where I get to use the colors that I never really use. Okay, so let me make sure this is dry. Next thing I'm going to add, let me make sure it's dry first not quite dry. I'm going to add some Mod Podge to the top. And what the Mod Podge does, it gives it kind of a hard end. First, it reinforces it, but it also gives it more of a leathery look. So I'm just gonna put the Mod Podge over the top and I'm speeding through this. Um, I would highly recommend, you see what my colors are doing. I would recommend really giving it time to dry. Ooh. What I can do afterwards is go back in because it looks like my mahogany is the color. I can go back, that's, that's you know, reacting to the water because it's water-based. So, um, I can go back in with my other colors and kind of fix it up. Okay, let me set that aside so I can clean up my mess. Baby wipes are my friends. Here we go. One more time to dry it. Okay. Now this is still drying. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my signature and on, this is going to be my signature in the front, I think. Let's see. Let me use this side. I'm going to take on this cover of the signature, and I'm going to use glue and my adhesive runner, and I'm going to put glue all the way. I'm going to use both glue and this. You can use double-sided tape. You can use just glue. I've done it with all of it. I'm going to also add some glue. If I can find my glue. There it is. And I particularly want to put glue 
right by the spine. I'm going to make sure your edges, and then I just go all over just to reinforce it a little bit more. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this signature and I'm going to glue it into my cover. I want to make sure that it's lined up to the bottom edge and lined up to the top edge. Kind of hard to see right now. Sorry about that. Let's try again. It looks like my cover is not as wide as my signature, which is not a good thing, but I'm gonna, I'll have to trim it off. Okay, and then I'm going to take my second signature and I'm going to put glue and tape runner on the back side. And the same way, all the way over to the edges. And make sure I glue it right near the, the spine. Okay, and we want to get this as pretty close. The easiest way to do it is have it stand up because you want to make sure that you're leaving enough room. And I would leave about a quarter about a quarter of an inch between signatures. Just like that. This is gonna have to be trimmed. The rest isn't just that first page. There were some that were a little longer. I'm gonna trim that. I'm going to trim the cover. And I'm going to trim this first page. You see the easiest way to trim it. There we go. Okay, we're going to trim this one. We're also going to trim this first page. 
actually it's the cover, just like that. We might need to trim it. I'm not gonna do that right now because I wanna move along. I wanna show you how I do the spine. Now I have some, a pretty vintage uh, napkin. So I'm going to take this and I want it to I want to have a few flowers on the back. So it looks like I can fit whoops. This entire piece. Just like that. And then we're going to come probably about right here. I got about, oh, 20 of these and all pretty patterns for like $3. Crazy, huh? It doesn't happen very often here in Miami where you find something like this. Let me see if I can iron this a little bit. I'm going to cut around this. And right around this. Okay. Now, the question is, when I put it on this, I had another one. I really think I ruined it by putting all this ink stain. And I was kind of stuck with it. And where it went wrong is it picked up the color from underneath. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is, this goes like this. I think I'm going to do it just like this. That's pretty. I think that's pretty. And then I'm just going to color the edges after I put it on. And I'm going to use this glue. Before I use Mod Podge, and that's too water-based. So it really picked up the color from underneath. And that was my craziness. So I'm just gonna put some glue here. What's nice about this glue, it sticks on everything. But I'm gonna rub it a bit because I don't want the lines in it as much. Okay, let's just do it.
I think that's much prettier than the other one. does need some more glue back here. That seems to be sticking okay. Alrighty, so let me, excuse my arm, get some vintage photo. Much better. I love the way this kind of leather look looks. It's kind of very interesting. It really does look like, feels like leather when you make it. Okay. So that is our paper bag journal so far. I got you through the construction. It's really so easy to make. And um, a lot of fun to use. I'm going to close this with, I think I'm gonna close it with a button. I'm not sure if I have any, I need a big, there's a big one. One more big one. Oh, that's kind of a pretty one. Okay, I knew that I would have to spill everything out, right? <laughs> Might look pretty with, nah. Now, if you chose not to use a button for your closure, you could always glue um, a ribbon between your front of your signature page and your cover like they did, you know, like she did in here. She glued it right there. It's kind of pretty with a uh, ribbon, but I forgot, so. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna bore you with that now. Um, but in my next video, I'm going to start decorating it. So join me if you'd like. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something and try it. I learned so much from you all. So thank you. Have a good one. Bye.